Hey guys, my name is Keenan, and today we are doing a commercial shoot breakdown of this scene here and the whole commercial we shot. So let's check out the commercial first. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, we have an emergency fund. Oh, oh. Oh. What? Sweet, right? Well, we're gonna show you guys how we did some of those tricks, how we did some of the water gags, the lighting, the cinematography breakdown, even though it's only one shot. But we're gonna give you guys kind of an inside look on how we did some of that. And today we are at our shop, and this shop is where we keep a lot of the big props uh, that we don't have room for at, the, uh, at our studio. And we use it to build bigger sets when we're doing water gags and fire stuff that is uh, a little hard to do in a uh, smaller studio space. So let's show you what we're working with here. Okay, we're gonna save the lighting breakdown for last, but let's jump into the set, how we got all this done. So these are flats that we have already, that we built before, that we've repurposed for quite a few shoots. And this time, for this shoot, we painted these two blue. We added some wainscoting and some trim along the edges some really nice floral wallpaper, as you can see, and the outlet box for the washing machine. A little sink, we added a window, we already had a hole in that one for a window. And the nice thing about dressing it up a little bit more, it's a little bit more work than just painting them a solid color or doing that, but it really sells the space a little bit more. A little extra work kind of goes a long way. And the great thing about wallpaper is it really helps hide the seams that are in the flats naturally. And right behind me, you can see this seam like a little bit, but what's nice is on camera, you can't actually see it. So this is a 12 foot, this section is 12, by eight foot scene that we built here. The fun part about this shoot is everybody had a task that they had to do constantly. There's a lot of things uh, that had to have a little bit of movement and a little shake to them when the action took place, when we needed that scene to cut to the other scene, to the clean, perfect, everything's pristine, mwah, scene. So Adam was hiding behind the washer and the dryer, giving them a little bit of a bounce during the whole thing, which was great because we wanted it level, and that way he could just hold it when we landed. Zach was over here behind this flat, actually, pulling on a, a little fishing wire to give this clothes rack just a little bit of a shake. Caleb was over here. Caleb and I swapped roles on this one for a bit, uh, giving this laundry basket a little bit of a shake. And then down here on the vinyl floor that we added to the scene as well, I was laying on the floor, tossing this money bag out of the sink, as you saw. Now, if you really want a top-notch secret, what do you put in a money bag to really sell it? It's a great question. I'm glad you asked. And the secret is dog food. Look at those little dog food coins. It's kind of smelly. This has been tossed around and got a little wet, but it's, it's fine, it's fine. So the washing machine had water squirting out of it. We had this baby filled up with water. Um, and at one point there was even a troll that was hiding in here. I think I can just subtly see that he's in a washer. Into the toilet, I will go. Oh no, the set goblin is back. Get out of here, shoo! He wasn't related to the shoot at all. And we had a sump pump in here on a remote that we could control to get the water spewing out right when we wanted it to. We had this tube kind of uh, snuck through the side like this. The door closed on it pretty perfectly. We turned it on and it would be spraying out. And we even filled the tube with Dawn dish soap to make sure that we had that nice foamy, sudsy, soapy look coming out of the washing machine because it, we tried it without it and man, it looked very, very sad. It was just the water on the white washing machine just really blended in 
and that did not look good. So this thing worked amazing, especially because we had it on the remote. The washer and the dryer, we picked up for 50 bucks total. This one was 50 bucks. This was the whole budget. 50 bucks here. We bought it off Facebook Marketplace. The guy that we bought it from said it has a leak, which was perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. The dryer was free. That doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. But we didn't need it to work. We needed it to look good on set. Behind, you can see the box that we added. In the tiny, tiny bottom left corner, we have a little hole. And we'll show you uh, how we did that from behind. Let's go take a look. All right, so this is the outlet box that you saw from the front. And these are the flats from the, from the backside. So we added this. We uh, have not used a uh, washer outlet uh, box before. We drilled a little hole back here. And then we turned this bad boy to, uh, to angle spray. And right when Joel got the cue back here, he was ready with the, the clicker for the sump pump that was in the washing machine. And he was ready with this when he got the second cue. And he had his spray lined up to just nail the actor right where we need him to. And then this way, we wanted a manual person, a person back here so that we had a little bit more control of how long it lasted, you know, the timing of things and how hard the spray was so that it would be able to die down just a little bit at the end. Um, so having him back here and, and being able to communicate him with him worked perfect. Okay, so that was Joel's job most of the time. This is our nice little vegetation that we created right outside the window. And you can see a, a nice little board here, but I'm gonna let Zach take over. He's the lighting expert. Uh, over me. I'm going to hop on camera and let him give you the lighting breakdown for here, the key, the, the overhead, all of it. Whoa! All right, guys, it's me, Zach. I'm here to talk about the lighting a little bit. We've got this kind of bright sky that we're trying to emulate over here. We originally had an 8x8 Ultra Bounce set up, uh, but there was just way too many wrinkles on it and we could see it very clearly from uh, the shot. So we went ahead, pulled out this white board that we had laying around the shop, grabbed a C-stand and a Cardellini and we rigged it up and it worked just fine. So sometimes you don't always need like the brightest, newest gear to get a good shot. You just need what works best. And sometimes it's laying around you. How we're illuminating this board is actually with a Aperture 300D Mark II with a spotlight mount. I'm probably getting blasted pretty hard with it right now. Um, that's right over here. Uh, we used the spotlight mount uh, just so it could, it could just hit the board and so we wouldn't get a bunch of spill everywhere else. Um, that brings me to the key light that we've got. Um, we wanted to do it upstage, so it looked like it was kind of coming from a window on this side. And just a 300D Mark II uh, blasting through a four x four frame of 250 with, um, actually a beadboard at the bottom, but we could have used a four x four solid. That actually would have been preferred, but we happened to have the beadboard on set. So we used it just to block some of the, uh, the spill that we had going on because it was casting some, some heavy light onto the sink in the, in the washing machine. So uh, follow me, let's go over here. And I'll just quickly note, we've got a four x four frame with a, uh, with a skirt on it set up right over here. Once again, just to kill some of that spill that we had from our key light, it was casting just a little bit of hard light um, onto our scene. And since we're over here, let's go ahead and talk about this combo stand because it's doing something that we don't usually do with, uh, with combo stands in conjunction with 12 by 12 frames. Usually we'd have one combo stand on one side of the frame and then another combo stand on the other. But with the way that the frame was composed and this, just the way we had to kind of work with our set, uh, it worked better to kind of offset our combo stands on either side. We've got one over here, kind of off to the side, um, actually holding it up with a Cardellini, and then another one over here that we uh, were actually having to boom with a speed rail um, and some big bends. Uh, we had to do it this way because we had one of our combo stand legs actually in the frame of our shot originally. So we had to boom it out a little bit, but 
the rest of the frame is actually being supported on the flats. Um, and we've secured them on either side with cartellinis, so they're clenched on, they're really good, so they won't go anywhere. This isn't a traditional way we'd set up a 12 by 12 frame, but it worked uh, in this situation. Let's go inside, let's go inside and get hit with this wonderful ambient fill here. So yes, this is kind of our, our, our main ambient source. Um, we've got it illuminated with a 300D Mark II as well and um, we're using a really big menace arm for this that, that allows us to boom the light out really, really far. Um, when we're in a space like this where we don't have an overhead grid, menace arms and goal posts work really well. In this case, we did go for the menace arm, which worked great. Um, this is the silent grid at a quarter intensity for our diffusion. Now let's jump back into why we decided to place our key light where we did. Uh, it was important to us to go ahead and upstage this light. Um, as you can see, this is kind of where our actor was. And when my face is pointed this direction, I'm getting, I'm getting hit with some really nice light that actually was kind of, you know, supposed to feel like it was coming from this window. Uh, like it was motivated from that window source. So I actually intended to put our key source through that window, but uh, with the angle of the wall and where our actor was gonna be positioned, it made for a pretty narrow little pathway for that light to travel through. So we decided to kind of cheat it out from on the other side of the flat and make a big four by four source there. And, and that worked pretty well. All right, I think that just about wraps up the lighting breakdown for this video. Um, I'll go ahead and take over for Keenan and give you that outro don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. We're on the way to 4,000. We really, really want it. Help us out, hit that like button, get this video in all the news feeds in the world. We would really love it. We'll talk to you later. I'm Zach with Threefold, and thanks for watching. Wow, look at this big set I'm in. How'd I get in this big set? See you later. <laughs>